Hello, everyone. My name is Yong Kang He. Today, I'm going to show you how to build an EKS cluster, plus deploy Cassandra database, plus install custom KT software, all done automatically with just one magic command in about 20 minutes. So let's get started. So two parts. First of all, I will show you how to build the ready to use labs with just one command in 20 minutes. Secondly, I will show you how to destroy the whole labs. Here are the prerequisites. First of all, you need to have an AWS cloud account and the trial account should be okay. Secondly, you need to have the access permissions to cloud shell, EKS, S3, etc. cetera. And uh, followed by the first important task, we need to clone the repository from GitHub to your cloud shell. And then you need to install the required tools like EKS CTO, Kube CTO, Helm, and uh, you also need to input the AWS access credentials. So run this command, change it to the directory, run AWS prep.sh. Optionally, you can customize the cluster name, the instance type, the region, and also the bucket name by editing the set event uh, environment.sh file. So here are the magic command. It's called a deploy.sh. Before I'm going to show you what exactly deploy task do, because the command does need like 20 minutes, let me jump to the console. So right now I'm in the console and let me see. Yeah, I logged into Cloud Shell. So I run the git clone, copy the repository from our GitHub. Yes, and then second command, I change it to the directory and then I run AWS prep. Uh, which will install the required tools and it will ask you to enter your AWS access key ID first. So where to find the access key ID and also secret key. So if you log into AWS console, if you click your name here and uh, there is uh, my security credentials, I'm actually walk you through how to create a new credential. So let's wait the page load. So if I click, uh, I actually, I can't create a new one, only two are allowed. Let me delete one of the access key here. So deactivate and then delete. So now I, I can click create access key so I just copy the access key ID and uh, paste here, click enter. It will ask you AWS a secret access key. So I go back to the cloud console, copy the secret access key and then paste it here. Here we go. So we are ready to deploy now. So the magic command is run deploy.sh and we will deploy we will first of all to create a EKS cluster from all AWS cloud. Now let me come back to the slide. So what does deploy.sh do? So first of all, we will create an EKS cluster from all the cloud shell. And secondly, we will install custom KT software followed by deploy a Cassandra database. And then we will create a S3 storage location profile and followed by create a backup policy for Cassandra database. Also, we will run an on-demand backup job. So basically the on-demand backup job, we will take a snapshot of the application components have all of your Kubernetes configurations. And we'll also take a snapshot of your workload, which in this case, that's Cassandra database. So 
not only will take a snapshot of your whole environment, will also allow you to export the snapshot to AWS S3 storage bucket. That's the whole magic command does. So the whole command, it does take like around 20 minutes, but majority of the time actually was used to create a EKS cluster. I don't know why AWS cloud requires 20 minutes to create the cluster. Uh, the rest of the steps, install K10, deploy Cassandra, create a S3 storage location, create a backup policy, kick off an on-demand backup job. So all you know, within like a three, three to five minutes, typically. Yeah, that's about the deploy. So after the job completed successfully, you will be presented with a URL, which you can click that URL to log into custom k10 web console and uh, you also have the access token which is required when you log into custom k10 console i will show you shortly so let me finish uh, the other part so after you finish your testing basically you can run the destroy.sh to remove all of the labs so what it actually do here is we will remove the whole EKS Kubernetes cluster. We will remove the relevant VPC and also subnets, which are created by the EKS CTL. And we will remove all the relevant disks. And also we will remove all the relevant snapshots and followed by remove the S3 storage bucket. So you might ignore the remove the resource groups, uh, which is not relevant. I forgot to remove that line. Where to find more details? Here are the references. So the first one is the source code. The source code actually is from GitHub. So you can click the link. It will take you to the GitHub page. And also have the custom docs links here. And uh, there is a third party selected uh, custom as a DevOps tool for the July month. You might be interested to look into the details. The last one is the EKS backup and restore. There is a blog from all custom. What if uh, AWS is not your favorite cloud? I actually previously I recorded the Google Cloud Labs automation. So for Google Cloud, uh, with one command in six minutes, I can build a GKE cluster plus deploy PostgreSQL plus uh, you know K10 plus run the backup uh, and the policy etc. So here are a few links if you're interested. What about Azure Cloud? If your favorite cloud is Azure Cloud, we I also have the labs you know automation scripts ready for you. So you can run the one match command to build the AKS and plus MySQL database and plus the custom K10. So all done in eight minutes. I think from the slide presentation point of view, that's it. And uh, thank you very much. Now let me come back to the AWS console. So as I say, this step create an EKS cluster, it does take like about 20 minutes. So instead of you waiting for the results, I actually, I got a, another cluster I created earlier so I can show you what does it looks like. So let me go to the other cloud shell. So this is what it looks like. So by end of the job, you will notice there is a one line say here, here is your URL to access custom K10 console. Let me copy this URL and open new tab and press enter. So it will bring up the custom K10 UI and it will ask you the token code. So I go back to the cloud shell. I copy the whole token code and then paste it here. Click sign. Now you log into the 
console. First time logging, it will ask you company name, your email address, click accept. Here we go. So we're gonna do the job already completed successfully. So you can see the Cassandra database, the first job of the backup, and second job is it is actually part of one job, but it is two subtasks. First task is do the backup. If I click the backup, you can see we capture everything from your Cassandra database namespace. So including all the artifacts, all the specs. So like the persistent volume, namespace, secrets, config maps, services. Yeah, service account. Everything from your Kubernetes cluster captured by the backup. And we also allow you to move the snapshot to AWS S3 object storage. Okay, that's about the backup. Now I just want to quickly to show you how the restore looks like. So once your job finished, so on the top of the screen, you can see three cards. The first one is application. If I click applications, you will see I got a Cassandra right now. It's in compliance because I already got the restore. I got a two restore points. Why two restore points? Because I take snapshot, the first copy is from your container storage and that's uh, based on the snapshot. And the second copy, that's the exported copy, which already moved to object storage. So in this case, uh, AWS S3, I was using the East, US East 2 region. So if I click the snapshot, actually any one of the snapshot copy you can restore from. And then you got the option, so you can either do in place. If you don't want to change anything, you just do a in place restore. You just click restore. Or you might want to create a new namespace. So let's say Cassandra new. You want to restore to a new namespace. And then you click restore. We will restore everything back to the point we took the backup to a new namespace not just restore data, we will bring up the Cassandra database to the new environment, to the new namespace. And before I click the, the restore, I just want to quickly to show you the restore options. So instead of we restore all of the specifications or resources, we actually will allow you to select the individual objects. If I deselect all, you can say, maybe somebody deleted accident or deleted the secrets. I can just tick the secrets and then do the restore. So we will granularly just restore the in individual resource for you. Okay, that's about it. Now let me select the all, how I do a restore. So if I click restore and you can click the dashboard and you will notice the dashboard, the restore job will kick it off very shortly. Okay, the job already kicked off. So that's about it for today. So let me go back to the slide deck to see, oh, actually one last thing I want to show you is uh, after my testing job are done, what I need to do is uh, I want to destroy the whole environment. Let me see if I'm in the right uh, folder. So I got the older environment, it's on the EKS K10 dash older. So I done my testing. I want to destroy the whole environment. I just run destroy.sh. And then typically less than 10 minutes, we will destroy the whole environment. So the stuff we created, the EKS cluster, the S3 bucket, and the Cassandra database, uh, everything you know we created, we will destroy. So it's kind of like a cleanup, make sure you're not uh, in charge by AWS anymore. I think that's a body. Yeah. Thank you very much.